everyone, I'm Christina McCauley and this is your PCTA. All of us here at the Public Cable Television Authority strive to bring you closer to the neighborhoods around you. So stay connected with your PCTA. Bowling can be family fun, good times with friends, or if you're serious, you can go pro. The professional bowlers in the world have been here competing, and to watch them compete and win is, is very exhilarating. I mean, it's just, it, it gives you a big high. Bowling's a lifetime sport. If you learn how to bowl when you're a kid, you can do it forever. There's not many things you can do that with. And you can do it with your family, you can do it with your, you know, there's not many sports you can do that with. There are more than 5,000 bowling centers in the U.S., and Fountain Bowl has been one of the industry's standouts. They have a long history of hosting professional bowling tournaments, they also host the Special Olympics Bowling Championships. For nearly five decades, this enormous 60-lane center has been a hub of the community. Here's something you'll never hear at a bowling alley, silence. Well, Fountain Bowl was closed two days out of every year, Christmas and the 4th of July. But these lanes have been silent now for almost a year. So proprietors Gary Foreman and Dave Osborne have been forced to make the painful decision to close down and put the property up for sale. Trying to clean out the offices and, and doing this stuff, uh, you know, coming into an empty building is really, really a challenge. It's very difficult. This truly is a family. It's a family to me. Um, sorry. <laughs> Um, it, it, you know, bowling is just a little part of it. It really is all the people, bowlers, and it, employees that work here. Um, that, that just means so much to me and to everybody here. Maintenance supervisor Gavin Hawk has been making sure the lanes are all still operational these many months. The hope was that maybe another operator could take over and the new owners could keep the place open. Every single day I get at least 10 Facebook messages, uh, texts or whatever, what's going on? This place can't be gone. Tell me there's hope and the community's devastated. But the reality is the new owners will likely have plans for bigger profits in either residential or retail ventures. The closure marks not just the loss of a bowling center, but for many, the end of a way of life. I was two when I started coming to Fountain Bowl. My parents bowled in a league and I used to go into the playroom and then I have been bowling ever since I can remember. So I've been here a very long time. We were the gathering place. You know, all the clubs, all the organizations, all the fundraisers, everything, that birthday parties, weddings, I mean, you name it. We've had so many things here. So not only is the city losing a bowling center, we're losing, they're losing a really a great gathering place for the for the whole community. I think that's going to be the biggest loss. Dave and Gary's impact has been far reaching. Their volunteerism even landed them on the cover of a national trade magazine. From a personal perspective, this has been a great community and I'm honored and proud to be able to have been served and given back to this community. Now folks are going to have to find something else to do. Amy Stentz used to bowl with her senior league several days a week. They call me all the time or text me wanting to know if, uh, if Fountain Bowl's going to open again and things like that. And it's been sad forever, all of them, um, because it was uh, such a big uh, community of bowlers here. You know, you can't believe how many great senior folks we had here every day. And a lot of them bowled four or five times a week. It was part of their life, getting up, coming to the bowling center and socializing and having fun. There are roughly 200 bowling centers in California. Dave says he won't be surprised if more than 40% are forced to close before this pandemic is over. There's a lot of bowling centers around the country, especially that were, you know, borderline making it. And when this, something like this comes along, if you get in a hole, it's impossible to, to basically get out. So I think this will have a, a big impact. They say it's the people they will miss the most. Seeing how excited people get when they get a strike, I never lost that, I never lost that feeling of enjoying watching people knock the pins down and jump up and down no matter who they were. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a great ride. The community has been great to us. Um, we've just really thoroughly enjoyed this, uh, this run. Very sad, extremely sad, and uh, it has been difficult to process. Um, but. 
and I hope there'll be better days for bowling. At Fountain Bowl, this is Valerie Starn reporting. These days, a lot of emergency rooms aren't making a great first impression. Like so many hospitals, the concern here at Fountain Valley is that people will see the tenting and the construction and the fencing and might wind up putting off critical care. The concern is that the tent kind of makes the facility look like a war zone. And that can be uh, anxiety producing and intimidating to patients that come in. But the zone is actually a good sign that the ER can handle any overflow. So if you need care, don't hesitate. One of the worst thing you can do is allow fear of COVID to interfere with your ability to take care of another problem. For example, chest pain, abdominal pain, diabetes, hypertension, and for stroke, use the FAST acronym to spot the signs. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty, time to call 911. If you wait uh, on a stroke uh, and, and you wait several hours before you come in, our optimal stroke treatment may no longer be available for you. If you have an abdominal condition like appendicitis and you wait for a long period of time, that appendix may perforate and a perforated appendix is much more complicated to deal with than a non-perforated appendix. Also today, Dr. Korber has another important message. Get vaccinated. The main thing with the vaccine is that the vaccine is going to be responsible for ending this pandemic, just like vaccination was responsible for ending smallpox worldwide. This is the ER staff posing after getting their second dose. Our, our entire emergency department physician group has been vaccinated. Nobody had any side effects other than maybe some flu symptoms on the second vaccine. Some of us, myself included, had a sore arm. Othena.com is the Orange County website to find out the latest on eligibility and vaccine appointments. Be patient, you'll likely have to check back often. Meanwhile, Facebook recently vowed to do their part to quash the flood of vaccine misinformation on social media. The ability of the vaccine to help you fight off this infection or attenuate this infection is incredibly high. So you wanna look at that data that shows how effective this vaccine is and try to ignore some of the uh, crazy information that you can find online that will potentially mislead you into making a bad decision. And just one final bit of advice, do your part to get us through. I want the public to know that the safest thing you can do while we're getting through this vaccine program is maintain social distancing, wash your hands, wear a mask and wear goggles when you're ever in close contact with anybody else. It is still the best protection against this virus until the majority of the population has been vaccinated. This is Valerie Starn reporting for your PCTA. Thanks for tuning in. We have more great ways to keep you connected, so keep it right here on your PCTA. Finding us here today in the middle of Fountain Valley in Miles Square Park in the city's operated sports park section of the park. And we have the great fortune of being able to partner with uh, the 360 company who's doing COVID testing. And there's COVID testing in different super sites throughout the county, but this is really an opportunity to bring something local. So people aren't in their cars having to go out into Anaheim, Costa Mesa's, the, the two closest sites. Here they can come in. This is a one-time event now, but we're seeing how the demand is. It looks busy already. In this pandemic, COVID-19, people are suffering. I know the factory worker, food server, even healthcare worker was asked to get COVID testing and they have to pay out of their pocket. And in the effort of combating this, the city of Pound Valley worked together with uh, Supervisor Andrew Doe office 
and Orange County Health Department. We come up with this free COVID testing for the entire community. And we are all in this together. I have no doubt that this event will serve and will help the community tremendously. Today, uh, 360 Clinic, in collaboration with Orange County Healthcare Agency and uh, Mayor Michael Wall from Fountain Valley, is doing uh, free COVID testing, no cost uh, testing at, in Fountain Valley at the Fountain Valley Sports Park. So, COVID testing is, is beneficial, it's not just for yourself, but uh, also like the mask, right? You want to put on the mask to, because you care about the people that's around you, right? You want to test because you want to care about the people around you and you want to make sure that they don't get exposed uh, because you go undetected. Yeah, we, so we believe in making testing accessible to all parts of the community, whether it's uh, low-income area or high-income area, we should make it in, in, uh, testing available to all, all aspects of the community. I think it's great. It's a great response. And that, that tells you the you know, communities are pulling together and they're doing their own part to make sure that they don't bring that uh, COVID-19 back to their own uh, families or spread out to the community. If they feel that they've you know, been in contact with someone or someone has been in contact where they've been, so this is their way of sharing you know, and caring. Today we're partnering, uh, us, the County of Orange and the City of Fountain Valley is partnering with a, a 360 Clinic to help provide uh, mobile van testing for folks that you see here today. And as we are in, you know, the colder months, uh, we know that a lot of folks are feeling sick. Uh, and especially uh, as we do know uh, the rise in coronavirus cases, uh, providing more testing like this uh, for available for the public uh, provides them a sense of security that testing that they can get tested for free, though no results within 24 to 48 hours. And especially for sites like this, it's local, so they can, you know, a lot of these folks just live right down the street and come here and get tested. Certainly folks that are at home, should they be working at home or schooling at home and whatnot, uh, there's a lot of stress at home. Uh, and, and a lot of folks just don't know. Sometimes they get too much information, not enough information, but knowing that a location like this is available for them, uh, they can just take it upon themselves, come out, get tested, and they'll know. You know, and if uh, hopefully that they don't have it, but if they do, then at least at that point they can start to treat it. We do this on a daily basis throughout the county, uh, all of our cities that we participate in, especially in the first district. So uh, we can only expect more people to come today, not just here, but our super sites as well, and all the other locations that we have. Now is not the time to get comfortable. We all want to go back to uh, normalcy, um, and, and uh, we just have to be proactive about things. Uh, if you feel sick, or even if you don't feel sick, go get tested. It's free, it's widely available, results come back fast, and, and when you know, that's when you can start to treat it. As we are celebrating and welcoming the spirit of the holiday, of Christmas and New Year, uh, I wish everyone stay safe, stay healthy, but more importantly, uh, be aware of COVID-19 and let's work together, let's join hands so that we can combat this pandemic, COVID-19. Just want to thank the City of Fountain Valley, partnering with the County of Orange and also uh, 360 Clinic uh, for providing all the testing and we're going to continue to do it and together we'll get through this. Thanks for joining us here at your PCTA. Check back again soon to stay connected. I'm Christina McCauley. We'll see you next time.